Hi, and welcome to my channel. So today I'm here to do a review on three books that are geared towards middle schoolers. This is for like late fourth grade, fifth, sixth, seventh, maybe eighth grade. Um, and so I have three different books and I have read all three of them for the month in the month of July. And so today I'd like to talk about if they are classroom appropriate, how they could tie into curriculum, um, maybe what grade levels would uh, really get into this type of book. And so the three books that I have for you are The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris. Now this book just came out in December and it is going to be part of a series. And then the next book I have for you is The Thing About Jellyfish by Ali Benjamin. And this book was released a few years ago. However, it won a ton of awards, which is what perked my interest. You can see the list of awards here. It just goes on and on. And um, it had stellar reviews from a ton of different people. And so when I picked this up, I, I knew that um, I knew that I wanted to read it and I wanted to get it on my bookshelf. So you can see there's even more reviews here. And then finally, the last book that I have to do a review today is The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. And again, this was another, I picked it up at Walmart because the cover intrigued me. Um, and I read it in, a, in less than three hours. So this was a super fast read. And actually, this is the first one that I'm going to start with. So out of five, I would give this... I feel like a three and a half. I enjoyed it. I don't typically read middle school books, but so as far as middle school books go, I did enjoy it. Um, I do feel like it's for uh, younger middle schoolers, maybe like fourth, fifth, sixth graders. I think I might have a few seventh graders who would enjoy it. This would be really great though if you're doing a unit on survival because what would be awesome, this is something that I really want to do in my classroom, is I want to take like an essential question like um, what qualities must one have to be a survivor and get students together to read this book like so put four or five students on this book put four or five students on the hatchet put uh, four or five students on the Hunger Games and really make sure that you are gearing the books towards their reading ability towards their interest and placing them with other students who have similar reading ability and similar interests and then they can really talk about okay well in this book what does it take to be a survivor well what does the robot have to have? Well, it has to be able to adapt because it's in the wilderness and it has to be able to learn and move and communicate with the animals that are there, which it does. And so the qualities that the robot has to have in order to survive here is going to be different than the qualities that um, the main character in the hatchet would have to have in order to survive. And I think it would be really cool to have that discussion across books and then also within their own little community of readers when they're discussing this particular book. And then the other really neat piece about doing something like that is not only are you you know, differentiating, differentiating your curriculum in order to meet the diverse needs of all of your students, but you're also able to still have the same prompts. And you're also still able to make sure that everything is Common Core aligned. I live in a Common Core aligned state, so making sure that all of my assignments are still assessing my standards. So what does it take to survive? Well, you still have to go to the book and cite evidence from this book in order to talk about what the robot needs to, uh, needs to survive, but I'm still appealing to my lower level readers for this book in particular um, and making sure that they are you know, able to comprehend what it is they're reading. It's hard to have a student analyze a book if they don't understand what's going on. So I think this would be a great book to include in a unit on survival. So a quick summary, this book is about a robot that washes up on an island after the boat it was on uh, went through like this massive um, hurricane and it sunk. So Roz, which is the name of the robot, is the only surviving robot and it lands on this island. It has no idea where it is or what it is and it must survive. And so I thought it was um, heartwarming. It was very cute. Again, 
I don't know that a lot of my like eighth graders would really enjoy this. I think this is geared a little bit younger, like I said, fourth, fifth, sixth, maybe some seventh graders, um, but I did enjoy it. It's definitely a cute book. The next book that I want to talk about is The Thing About Jellyfish by Ali Benjamin. And as I already pointed out, this book received a ton of awards or was recommended for a lot of awards. And it was touching. I did enjoy this book. I did expect a little bit more just because of all the awards, um, but I ended up really enjoying this book. And so this is about a girl named Susie whose best friend dies. Um, she actually drowns on vacation and Susie has to now live with this. And Susie is 12, she's in middle school, and so it's a really tough time to be losing your best friend. So now Susie is trying to navigate school without her best friend. Um, she was already an outcast, and this was her only friend. Um, and so she's really struggling with uh, this death. Um, and you find out, um, and you find out throughout the book that they really were on the best of terms to begin with. Like this last year of school, her friend was kind of branching off and becoming friends with other people and Susie was kind of uh, being left behind and so their last encounter wasn't the best and now Susie has to live with this guilt of their last encounter and the fact that they never really made up and she goes silent. She ends up not talking for months and she doesn't see the point in talking. Uh, so she becomes obsessed with jellyfish because her friend was a really good swimmer and so for her to have drowned kind of just rock Susie's world. She doesn't understand how she could possibly have drowned and so she becomes obsessed with learning about jellyfish and this kind of helps her navigate her grief. Uh, so it was a really heartwarming book. I did enjoy it. If you are teaching a unit on identity or on grief or friendship, this absolutely would tie in. Or if you just have a student who is struggling, um, maybe something has happened in their life and they're grieving, this might be one that can help them um, learn to cope and realize that they aren't alone in their sadness. Um, I did enjoy it, as I said. I currently don't have a unit that I would include it in. I will absolutely put this on my shelf. I love the cover. It is absolutely gorgeous. I think this book would really fit for anyone in middle school, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. I think it would resonate with all of the students. Um, I think that girls would really connect more just because the main character is a girl and focuses on her and what she's going through. However, any student could absolutely read it. I did enjoy it. I would give this a 4 out of 5 because I thought it was heartwarming. I thought it had, you know, a good message. I loved um, the idea of navigating social circles in middle school because that is tough. You couldn't pay me to go back to middle school. And so to be able to connect with a student with a character who is struggling with their own social circle I think is pretty important. And the last book that I have for you today is The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris. And as I said, this book came out in December and it is going to be part of a series. I loved this book. Out of the three, this would be my favorite. I loved the main character. His name was Carter. He's very perceptive. He's able to um, understand when he is being... Uh, fooled and he's able to see through lies and deceit and he is able to become a good person because he doesn't want to become like those who do lie and deceit others. Um, he loses his parents at a really young age and he has to move in with Uncle Sly. So that says a lot about the uncle right there, what his name is, which would be a really cool activity to talk about how authors um, give characters certain names for a particular reason and then why do they do that? And then maybe the kids could cite evidence from the book as to why Neil Patrick Harris chose Sly as the uncle's name, which would be, it would just be a really cool activity and again, connecting right back to Common Core Standards. 
And so I think that a lot of students would enjoy this book. Again, I think it is perfect for your fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. I think even eighth graders would enjoy this. I actually have a few students in particular that I'm going to recommend this to in September. And so anyway, it is about this boy named Carter who decides to hop a train and run away from his uncle because he just can't deal with the crimes that his uncle is committing. His uncle likes to perform street tricks in order to get money and pawn things off of other people. For example, you know that game where you have the, the three shells and you put like the pea under the one shell and you like move it around really, really fast? Um, he will do that, but then while he's doing that, he will steal the guy's watch or steal the woman's uh, ring or her necklace or whatever it might be. And so Carter just really can't stand living this life anymore. And so he hops a train and he leaves and he finds himself in this town where there is a carnival going on. And he ends up befriending this man who actually is on the bottom. And... Um, he ends up meeting these uh, five, these five other kids, and um, together, all six of them are able to um, overcome a, a challenge. And he kind of realizes that he's not alone. And the one thing that I really love about this book is that Carter is really able to stand up for his beliefs and his morals, and he doesn't let others dissuade him from that. He knows what's right and what's wrong and he's not going to go to the wrong side, to the dark side or whatever you might want to call it. Um, he really wants to stand by his beliefs and I think that is a really important message for students. I think students can't hear that enough that they need to stand by them by their beliefs and they they know in their heart what is right and making sure that they are following their heart. Um, in social situations, in classroom situations, and at home. I think you could absolutely tie this in to curriculum. You could tie this in with um, friendship. You could also tie this in with survival because Carter, in his own way, is a survivor. He loses both of his parents. He escapes from a terrible uncle, and he begins to forge a new life for himself. And what does he need in order to survive? How does he survive losing his parents? How does he survive these years living with, and I say living loosely because they move from place to place and boarding house to boarding house, just stealing their way um, into boarding homes in order to have rent for the week, you know, so how does he survive that and still end up being such a great kid? So I think this would be really neat. You could absolutely have um, the Magic Misfits and the Wild Robot and the Hatchet and a million other books um, in one unit and have students talking about so many different qualities with survival and being a survivor but making sure they go back to their book to cite their evidence to support their claim. Um, and so overall, I really did enjoy this book. I would give this a four and a half out of five. I wanted to know more. I kept wanting to read this because I wanted to know what Carter would do and what his friends would do and how the um, how the book would end. This definitely had a Lemony Snicket vibe to it. Uh, he addresses the, um, the reader directly, which doesn't happen a lot in books, and I really do enjoy that, especially when it is done well. So it starts right off with salutations. This is just a clever word for greetings. Do you believe in magic? Hi there, yes, I'm talking to you. Well, do you? Do you believe in magic? If you're anything like the boy in this book, you might say no, but I assure you, there is magic all around you. It's true, don't believe me? Look into my eyes and tell me you don't see magic. And so right away, it's addressing um, how there is magic in the world and that's such a positive message because he's talking about like the magic in everyday things and he talks a little bit about that as he moves on and I love that he also just like Lemony Snicket does defines a more sophisticated vocabulary because I think that helps middle grade readers not only with their comprehension of what they're reading but also just build their vocabulary which as an English teacher is so important for them to do. 
Have you read any of these books? If you have, please leave a comment down below. And I'm also wondering, have you included any of these books in your classroom? Have any of you created a unit that's incorporated any of these? Are these um, you, books that you would consider putting into your um, classroom library and or teaching and having it as part of a unit? So please let me know your thoughts on this, if you have or if you are going to ever include these. And just if you read them, did you enjoy them? So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I will be back soon with more videos. Keep reading!